technical staff at Windsor revealed that Meghan bribed the doctor to sign Archie's birth announcement, but failed. Hello, friends. Welcome to Breaking Royal News about the notorious hypocritical couple Harry and Meghan Markle on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. A royal birth announcement is as entrenched in drama and history as any of the most opulent royal celebrations. As soon as the baby is born, a declaration with the signatures of the attending physicians is hurried from the delivery room to Buckingham Palace, where it is displayed for all to see on an easel in the courtyard. Celebratory gun salutes are also fired for the birth of every prince or princess, no matter where their place is in the line of succession. But as a new generation of royal babies makes their entrance, their parents are opting for a more modern approach to the announcement. However, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex chose a birth cloaked in secrecy before their social media reveal of baby Archie, while other young royal parents have imitated them and announced their pregnancies in the most appropriate manner for contemporary culture. But after emails alerting the media apparently failed to send, Harry and Meghan's PR staff made a number of mistakes that led to misunderstandings over the birth announcement. Emails did not reach certain media sites until 2 p.m. on May 6, 2019, even though Meghan gave birth to Archie at 5.26 a.m. Technical issues at Windsor were to blame, according to Kensington Palace, for some media outlets not receiving remarks at all. The statement that was ultimately released, more than eight hours after the baby had actually been delivered, was ambiguously phrased and read, The Duchess went into labor in the early hours of this morning. The palace had previously said that it would declare that the Duchess was in labor. The news was announced at 1.45 p.m. on Sky News, which had been chosen at random to be the pool broadcaster that would syndicate its video to all networks. An image with the caption, It's a boy, was shared on Harry and Meghan's Instagram account less than an hour later, leaving reporters and royal watchers' heads spinning. Twelve hours after the Duchess gave birth, an easel was set up outside Buckingham Palace without the names of the doctors who had cared for her. No one signed off on Harry's kid. Interesting. No one knows about the second one either because they conveniently escaped to the USA, where one can pay any quack for a signature on the document till they are found out. That's why there are so many lawyers in the country. Anything is possible till you're caught and dragged to court. It is strange that Harry and Meghan, who seem bent on publicity, haven't shared a front-facing, clear, recent photo of either of their kids. No birthday photos, no photos of the family out at a park or playground, nothing. Just blurry old photos taken from a distance or at weird angles. Maybe there is something to the borrowed kids theory. It will all come out eventually. Considering Harry and Meghan's expressions are suspicious because they behave completely differently from other young royal couples. For example, while Mike Tyndall opted to reveal the birth of his youngest son, Lucas, via a podcast interview and related how Zara had given birth on their bathroom floor, Princess Eugenie chose to spread the news of the birth of her baby son, Ernest, on Instagram. Despite the fact that King Charles was born on November 14, 1948 at 9.14 p.m., the birth was publicized in a conventional manner. Outside Buckingham Palace, a handwritten announcement announcing the birth of Prince Charles read, Princess Elizabeth, Duchess of Edinburgh, was safely delivered of a prince at 9.14 p.m. today. Following his birth at Buckingham Palace, Westminster Abbey's bells rang out, the King's Troop Royal Artillery saluted with 41 guns, and the fountains of Trafalgar Square were floodlit blue in celebration. Like typical husbands of the time, Philip chose to play squash on the palace court instead of being at his wife's side during the delivery. When the Duke learned that his son had been delivered, he hurried upstairs to the Buell Room, which had been turned into an operating room, where he cradled his newborn while still donning his sporting flannels and an open neck shirt. Princess Anne, the youngest sister of Charles, was born in Clarence House while Buckingham Palace was being reconstructed after the war, in contrast to her three brothers. The birth of Anne was announced with a sign displayed on the gates of Clarence House, 
on a board outside the home office in Whitehall and at Mansion House in the city on August 15, 1950 at 11.50 a.m. Elizabeth went back to Buckingham Palace for the official bulletin announcements of the births of Prince Andrew on February 19, 1960 and Prince Edward on March 10, 1964. After the birth of their youngest brother, Edward, the Duke allegedly contacted the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret, as well as the Prince of Wales and Princess Anne at their respective schools. William became the first future monarch to be born in a hospital on June 21, 1982, when Charles and Princess Diana gave birth to their first son, Prince William, at the Lindo Wing of St. Mary's Hospital. The prince's birth was announced on a gilded easel outside Buckingham Palace, but Princess Diana spent the night in the hospital following a 16-hour labor and revealed William to the world the next day. Prince Harry was born two years after his brother and similarly publicized, with Charles commenting that the delivery was much quicker than last time. In line with his status as a prospective successor to the throne, George's birth was announced to the public in a conventional manner, similar to Princess Diana and Prince William, who were at Kate's side as she gave birth to George on July 22, 2013. Kate, too, decided to give birth to her children in the Lindo Wing. The public would then be notified with a formal notification on a piece of creamy A4-sized Buckingham Palace-headed paper mounted on an easel before William made his first call to the Queen on an encrypted phone. According to a palace spokesman, some of the theaters from the notification were things we wanted to keep. It is very essential to us that this be carried out professionally and with the appropriate level of decency for the occasion. The baby who will inherit the kingdom was born today. It is good to be able to do it with some historical precedent since it is a rare event. Nevertheless, despite plans for a ceremonial announcement, the press was notified of the baby prince's arrival at 8.30 p.m. by a statement released by the royal palace. With their two younger children, Charlotte and Louis, the couple paved the way for the current period by making the announcement of the births on social media. On May 2, 2015, a tweet announcing Princess Charlotte's birth was followed by the customary easel announcement. Her younger brother, Louis, was born on April 23, 2018, and the news of his arrival was extended to both a Twitter and an Instagram post, which contained all the customary information, including the baby's weight, and the statement that Her Royal Highness and her child are both doing well. What do you think about Harry and Meghan breaking the traditional rule in announcing the birth of their child? Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. We hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the next videos. Goodbye.